Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We took last week off so we could move into the new, still under construction studios, but we're really excited about what we're going to be able to do at Media Monarchy and being really excited about what we can do is what Good News Next Week is all about. Of course, this is the spinoff from our long-running New World Next Week series that I do with my good buddy James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. We realized positivity was a necessity, and we covered positive news stories all through 2015, and I swore when the calendar turned over to 2016 that we would begin a Good News Next Week episode. This is number four, and I am glad you are here. Kickstarter project to release 10 million classified CIA documents. With a hat tip to our friends on Twitter at We Are Third. This is actually written by the guy who's trying to pull this Kickstarter, a guy named Michael Best. Here's the story. Outside of Washington, D.C. sits a database with more than 700,000 files and 11 million pages from the CIA. This database can only be accessed from four computers in a secure federal building. This isn't the plot to a spy thriller. It's a disclosure program from the agency, and it's time to get that information into the public's hands. Accessing the information, of course, isn't easy. Researchers have to go to the back of the third floor library at the National Archives building in Maryland, which is unfortunately unstaffed for half of the day. Tucked away in the library are the only four computers that can access the millions of pages of declassified records. If researchers ask for the main information desk, they're answered with confused stares and incorrect directions. Researchers trying to look up on the National Archives website where to access the computers won't find it on the page about doing research at that location or on the page for electronic records at that location. That information is tucked away on the page for online databases, despite it not being online. The CIA admits that the arrangement may be inconvenient and present an obstacle to many researchers. But Michael Best, the guy behind this Kickstarter, says it's like a scene from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Now, once you're at the computers, visitors aren't allowed to save any of the already digitized documents. you got to print them out. It's almost like something out of Citizen Kane, while under several kinds of electronic surveillance. If they want to share those documents with the world at large, they have to be scanned back in and uploaded. Of the 11 million pages on the CREST, that C-R-E-S-T database, just over a million have been printed, most of which are unpublished and unavailable to the general public. So here's the plan. Scan and upload as much as possible for everyone to access for free. Step one, digitize it. This means printing the documents from the CREST database, then scanning and, re and processing them. To process the records in any sort of timely manner requires a scanner with a daily high-duty cycle to keep the scanner from burning out. Step 2. Upload. Once digitized, the documents will be uploaded to the Internet Archive, archive.org, where Media Monarchy keeps a mirror and multiple files of every single thing we've done over 10 years. Upload it to the Internet Archive, where everyone will be able to access and download them for free. The server will also automatically convert, as best as possible, the files to formats including Abbey, PDF, Kindle, EPUB, and DAISY. And again, that's the great thing about uploading Media Monarchy content there, is I upload a video file, and it generates three other versions, high, low, open source. It's fantastic. Archive.org, sidebar. And the last step is donate. Once digitized, the paper copies of the documents will be donated to a university, a library, or some other kind of archive. So he is kicking the Kickstarter, and it's going to take a bit of money, but he actually goes on to itemize and line item every single thing and note for contingency plans, and it seems like a really good idea. It seems like a fantastic idea, and we wish him the best of luck. Michael Best, Kickstarter project to release 10 million classified CIA documents. Now, our second story and cover story this week on Good News Next Week, man legally changes name to above Z none of the so it can appear at the bottom of the ballot. This comes originally from the CBC, but was submitted to us via our good buddy, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Ever wish you could choose none of the above in an election? Voters in the provincial riding of Whitby, Oshawa. This is in Canada. This ain't happening in America. We're not doing anything like that. But they're going to see that option at the bottom of their ballot in the upcoming by-election. That is set for February 11th, coming up in 10 days as I speak to you now, February 1st, 2016. A 46-year-old guy from Thornhill, Ontario, formerly known as Sheldon Bergson, spent 137 bucks to legally change his name to Above Z None of the. 
got 25 voters to sign his nomination papers and registered with Elections Ontario to run in the February 11th by-election. Since the candidate names appear on the ballot in alphabetical order, surname first, his will be 10th of the 10 candidates and appear as Z, none of the above. In a phone interview, Z None of the said he's trying to give an option to people who are fed up with voting over and over again for the main parties and seeing nothing really change. Quote, I'm aiming for all the people who don't normally vote, said Z None of the, who has run in previous federal elections for the National Party as an independent candidate under his former name of Sheldon Bergson. I thought one of these days we should get none of the above on a ballot. And I first heard this idea almost 25 years ago. Listening to the spoken word cassettes from Jello Biafra, the former lead singer of the Dead Kennedys. They were cassette dubs to me, and that's how I heard them. He talked about this very early on, and that was one of the main kind of political moves that he had worked on. Is a really simple idea to say, hey, put none of the above on every ballot, on every election, in every place in America. If none of the above comes in first, you run a new election where none of the losers that you just voted against can run again. It would probably mean electoral chaos for a little while, but God, wouldn't it be worth it? So we salute Z none of the and hope that this works out. And again, this is not happening in America as the presidential selection show kicks into high gear here right now. Our third and final story on good news next week. This week, Japan's TPP chief resigns over corruption scandal. This via The Diplomat online and submitted to us on Twitter at Oni underscore no underscore Hanzo. And we love all the submissions we get from people all around the world. More on that at the end of this episode. Reporting by Shukun Bunshun, which is a weekly tabloid magazine last week, which alleged economic revitalization minister Akira Amari was involved in a cash for favors bribery scandal led to Japan's TPP chief resigning from the cabinet last Thursday. Amari explained, out of respect for my duty as a cabinet member and to take moral responsibility as a politician, I've decided to resign from the ministerial post today. Amari was made responsible for Japan's economic and fiscal policy under Prime Minister Shinzo Abe when the second Abe cabinet was convened in 2012. He was a key player in pushing Abe's economic agenda, including Abenomics domestically and the mammoth Trans-Pacific Partnership TPP trade deal internationally. The Shukin Bunshun article alleged that Amari and his aides received illegal donations from a construction company in return for mediating negotiations between the company and Urban Renaissance Agency, a semi-public housing developer fully funded by the central and local governments. The article accused Amari and his aides of accepting funds and entertainment from the construction company worth a total of 12 million yen, or $100,000. U.S. Federal Reserve dollars, that is. Still, the signing of the TPP in New Zealand will go forward on February 4th, probably as you are watching this and very soon thereafter. The ratification of the 12-nation trade deal in the Japanese diet is likely to be delayed. Nobutera Ishihara, the LDP's secretary general, will succeed Amari and attend the TPP signing ceremony next week. So that's one of those, that's kind of good news in that he had to fall on his sword, if you will, and it's really bad news for what it means for those 12 nations and the nations that will be exploited by those 12 nations, but I suppose we find the good news in that it further exposes what we've been talking about the TPP, and we can document it here again, and that's again the great time of doing work like this for so long now, of doing Media Monarchy for 10 years, is that we've documented so much, so it starts to feel like nothing new under the sun sometimes, but it feels like it's just another notch in the arm to say, hey, we've seen this before, so we're not going to fall for it again. And again, those, I think, are ways that we are winning. Or that's one of those stories James and I would just call a not unmitigated good news story. We love the submissions we get on Twitter via hashtag good news next week, and we'll close out with just a few good news next week headlines. Justice Department launches review of the San Francisco police that would file under the previously mentioned not unmitigated good. 
submitted at Rob underscore Hyperborean. The Fanta self-filling water bottle for bicycles creates water from air. Now, you've heard of this technology before, but this attaches to your bike, and as you're flying through in motion, it's gathering up that air and pulling those particles and making fresh water for you. Crash Survivor turns her back brace into badass armor. London Borough becomes the first in Britain to vote to leave the EU, a.k.a. Brexit. That was submitted to us at Michael Alexis B. And we close out back here in the States as Silva, North Carolina's town council calls for a constitutional amendment to end corporate personhood, a.k.a. Citizens United. We love highlighting the positive ways that we are winning, and that is the only way we're going to keep moving forward and be a part of anything loosely connected to what we've once called alternative media. And we love your support as we try and learn our way forward and do it in a fear-free, positive kind of way. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com. Thanks so much for watching. Good news next week.